but you know there's, there's just the the perennial thing that we build into our girls lives is you're smarter than you give yourself credit for you're a lot tougher than you think you are you can push yourself to heights that you can't even conceive of right now there are things out there mountains waiting for you to tackle that are so big that if you saw them right now you'd probably barf because you're not ready for it yet but as you keep getting stronger and you get out there and keep putting one foot in front of the other you're able to do some amazing stuff welcome to the legacy roadmap podcast your ultimate guide for creating a lasting legacy as an entrepreneur whether you're an ambitious entrepreneur or a seasoned business owner, our podcast offers insightful conversations with successful entrepreneurs and experts who have navigated the path of legacy creation. We explore topics that matter to you, personal responsibility, financial growth, leadership, and succession planning. Our goal? To equip you with practical insights and strategies that help you transition from simply running your business to building a legacy. Join us each week as we delve into purposeful discussions aimed at positively impacting future generations. Your journey towards leaving a lasting legacy starts right here, right now. Let's dive in. Does your business serve homeowners? If so, you need to know about HOA.com, the number one referral network for professionals who serve homeowners. And we're looking for quality contractors and home service pros that we can recommend and refer to homeowners in your area. Not only will you get promoted on the HOA.com website, you'll get business from other certified pros and premier pros in your market. These people serve homeowners every day, so we help you build referral partnerships that keep referrals coming to your business for years to come. Go to HOA.com com slash pro now and get started are you an entrepreneur or business owner if so you need to know about the achieve systems business building membership we are one of the best referral based communities that wants to refer you we help generate you thousands of leads per year we also provide you an incredible mentorship program that has won many awards we don't stop there. We have 60 plus opportunities to take your business to the next level, like authoring and publishing books and many, many more. Go to AchieveSystemsPro.com and get started today. Do you want to make more money in your business? Most business owners focus on building revenue. That's not enough. Building profits is what feeds your family, and almost no business owner understands how to build profit without building revenue. I can show you with near perfect accuracy the exact business growth strategies that will generate the most revenue for your business in the shortest amount of time, focused on building profit. Learn more at bizlife.coach. Our guest today is a multipreneur with businesses in both podcasting and clean lifestyle space. 2012 was the year that kicked Michael Fritz Hughes onto the path of entrepreneurship. Facing a cancer diagnosis, but he came through just fine. It was just the warning shot he needed to teach him to do two things. One, get serious about priorities. And two, get serious about nutrition and health. Fortunately, his wife Charlotte was the spearhead in making sure the environment was correct for their whole family. Michael Fritz Hughes and Robert talk about family and business and how the challenges they faced in life created the opportunities for building businesses. Changing how their family cleaned created an opportunity to help others get more toxic chemicals out of their homes. Seeing the power of relationships and storytelling opened up the world of podcasting. Well, Michael, thank you for joining me today. Looking forward to uh, a, a great conversation. Me too, man. So typically start each episode just with folks sharing their own entrepreneurial journey and what's led them to the impact they're making today. All right. Well, I can share that none of what I am going to talk about today was planned. Um, I often joke with people, I don't really have a career so much as I have a careen. Uh, I didn't plan on being an entrepreneur when I grew up, and here I am. But I was kind of pushed into it by circumstances in life, and I found that I just really, really enjoy taking immense yet calculated risk. It tickles, and it feels weird in the belly. And I am never going to stop, man. I'm just going to keep pushing myself and see what else I'm capable of. So that's the story. That's where I am today. <laughs> nice. So 
I really shifted in my own life thinking about legacy and and I know that many of your choices are have been about legacy. So would you share how legacy is impacting your decision to to be an entrepreneur and and the entrepreneurial enterprises that you're involved in? Definitely. So legacy plays a part in a way that it didn't used to, right? So previously I was hey, I'm going to start a business and I'm going to be the guy, you know, I would just build jobs for myself. And it's like, well, if I'm going to be leaving a legacy, that kind of implies that I need to build this in a way where I'm not the guy, you know. So as I meet people and I get influenced by those that have multiple businesses, like three, four, five, 10, 20, 100 businesses, it's like they're not working 40 hours a week in every one of those. That's uh, impossible. And so what am I doing to structure things in a way where I can just walk away from it, not in a done, you know, fashion, but it's still running. It's, it's still self-sufficient. So that's where legacy plays a role is I'm building something that our girls can operate maybe one day in the future. Changes the thinking. It changes the thinking pattern to say, okay, here's where things are at today. Now, how can I engineer this to build it so that I'm not the person, I'm not the long pole in the tent? And that's fun. That's fun. Well, and I think it goes even further for you because the business your wife is running is because of your daughter. And and so would you tell us a little bit more about, about that and, and what you guys are creating? Sure. Yeah. So we have a business called Exactly Zero, and we make a wide variety of clean lifestyle products. Usually when we're at farmers markets, people come up and they say, oh, so and that just happened this past Saturday. This uh, husband and wife couple came up and they said, oh, they make soap. And I'm like, we make more than soap, bro, bro. I said, take a look at what all we've got. So we've got sunscreen and lip balms and lotion bars and body butter in the cooler season. It's going to melt right now. Uh, <laughs> even dog paw lotion. We just debuted that. And the whole purpose of that business was started because back in July 2012, I got diagnosed with cancer. And, you know, as part of building the legacy, it's, well, what are we going to do with this? We don't want to just get through this part of the, the chapter of life and be like, Whew, dang, glad that's over with. But we just took that and said, how are we going to improve ourselves? And we improved ourselves in nutrition and also in what we put on our bodies and enough people, I often joke, I'm like, I think people just saw Charlotte taking lip balms and sunscreen and stuff out of her purse one too many times. They went from saying, have you guys ever thought about starting a business to you should start a business and like, how much do you charge and shut up and take my money? And we're like, I guess we're starting a business, right? But even at the outset, when we started making things, we we're making everything ourselves, right? But we're very quickly approaching a point where yeah, we probably need to hand that off and we need to hand off the shipping and we need to hand off the social media. We need to, you know, we're, we're chunking up the business in terms of what's a delegatable thing because the more that we hand off to not like just always outside agencies, but if we hand off parts and pieces of it to one of our four daughters, they're really good at that sort of thing. One's good at packing and shipping. One's good at making stuff. One's good at graphic design. It's like, well, that's convenient. all kinds of things. It is, right? It's like it just lined up perfectly. Well, they hang around us so much that it's like, eh, we're going to rub off on them, I'm sure. So let's talk about, obviously, the legacy of zero, right? This idea mm -hmm. of creating a product that's obviously better for your body, better for the planet, better for your children. Um, I mean, obviously, your motivation was your own you know, life experience, but the impact is really going to hopefully be much, much more significant. Right. I like to think so. That is the goal. Um, what we're doing with this company and what we decided at the outset to do was we're going to make clean lifestyle products. And back when I had cancer, there weren't really many options out there. If you wanted to go all natural. If you wanted to say, all right, I'm getting rid of my deodorant that I bought off the shelf at a big box retailer. I'm going to go natural, right? Sticks of deodorant like that are commonly anywhere between 20 and $30 per mm -hmm. stick. And they're not big sticks. 
Um, my camera just switched off. Sorry about that. Um, but the problem is that for so many people that want to get in, they want to get that natural, that natural direction. They don't want to pay an arm and a leg. You know, you can refinance your house. Sure. In order to afford going that lifestyle, but we're like, how can we enter the market at a level where it's affordable for most people? Because that's what we're trying to do. We want to bless as many people as possible. We're not trying to be the cheapest out there, but we want to give people options where we didn't have those options previously. Mm. Yeah, so valuable. So obviously the the other element of your business, or I guess it's another business that's primarily yours, is helping podcasters. And in the podcasting space, obviously there's a there's a legacy element to to podcasts, right? Once they're out there, they're they're forever. <laughs> And that's right. So, yeah. Talk a that's, little bit that's, about that's, podcasts. Yeah. It's out there forever. It's permanent. So be careful what you say on the air, boys and girls. Um, yeah. I mean, when it comes to podcasting, the, the thing that I've learned, the legacy that gets developed in that area, it actually, and this is going to sound kind of weird, you know, speaking as a podcast agency owner, I usually don't focus on the podcast itself. That might sound a little bit wonky. Like what? Like my focus is the relationship and I got started in podcasting back in July, 2019. So after cancer, after exactly zero, after we started doing all that stuff. And I realized that there is an immense benefit to having guests on a show in terms of building relationships. That's the capital. That's the capital. And I've had people on all of my shows over the years and they've gotten on and they've shared things with me. I had one guy share something with me and he like mid sentence, he said, I've never told anybody that before out loud. I don't know why I'm telling you. And I'm like, I guess I got one of those faces, man. I don't know what to tell you, but you know, when people come along and they're volunteering to spend time with you, you're building a relationship. And if you happen to have that superpower of being able to do that very quickly, and you wrap a podcast around that, then your legacy becomes how you made every single one of those people feel, not just your guests, but also your listeners. So again, like I said at the outset, at the beginning of the show, I didn't plan any of this stuff, but I'm realizing that I've got superpowers in these areas of building relationships, of sharing a story, storytelling. I'm supposed to, I went to school to be, I graduated with computer science, man, degree. I was supposed to be a huge nerd like, I'm not supposed to know how to talk to people. We're just supposed to write code. And now it's like, what? What am I becoming? I don't know. But I'm I'm making a big impact and leaving legacy everywhere that I can. So, so I'm a perfect fit you. for your show. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's talk about this, your relationship with, with your wife and, and how that's impacted your your leap out of the, the basement where a coder would sit to this <laughs> into the limelight of, of entrepreneurship. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Charlotte has been amazingly supportive. And I say that from a position of it has not been easy. It is never easy taking a leap from getting a predictable salary paycheck all the time to, Hey, I'm going to start a business. Even though I was starting a business back in 2015, the business I started was exactly the kind of work that I was doing previously. And that's what I was known for. Like I would, I would go into these bigger corporations and I would write software test automation for these companies that are writing code. And they're like, okay, we wrote the code. Now we got to test it. Testing takes too long. Let's automate. We don't know how to automate. Let's bring in the fritz, you know, and I would come in and do that. That was my reputation. Everybody knew me as the, uh, the test automation guy especially here in St. Louis. I had business cards with that written on it and everything. But even then, it still like mentally was a huge switch to be flipped to say, we're going from stability to instability. And we're going from predictability to unpredictability. It's hard. She has been a rock steady supporter of me. And it's scary running a business. It's scary starting a business. It's scary starting multiple businesses. It's like, well, you didn't you didn't get enough with the first one? No, I didn't. And let's make some more, right? But when I look and see 
the plight that some other entrepreneurs, especially men, go through and their spouses aren't really supportive. Like they pay lip service to it, but they're not really supportive. It's like, good Lord, dude, like how, how do you manage? Like, I, I dare say they're tougher than me because if they can just keep getting up and keep getting at it day after day, when their wife is like, I'm tired of not making any money. How come we got all these bills and bop, bop, bop. It's like, like how in the world do you keep doing that? Right. But she has been really, really supportive and we've only been married 15 years, but we conduct ourselves like we've been married three times as long. Like we've come through some pretty raucous things and you know, coming out the other side, we're just like battle hardened. We're unstoppable. She, she probably nice. feels like she's less unstoppable, you know, just because there's all kinds of other stuff going on. But I'm like, girl, I often tell her, I'm like, you are a lot stronger than you give yourself credit for. So encouragement is my spiritual gift. I just, I build into her and I build into the girls all the time. I'm like, listen, you are tough. You are nice. tough as nails. And don't sit there and tell me, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, no, you have got a strength inside you that I see it, even if you don't. She's amazing. She's probably yes. not going to listen to this. So I'm like pumping her up and she's like, not ever going to hear this go. podcast, but love you, Charlotte. Yeah, the energy, the energy still flows, man. So we'll be right back after this short break. Do you need an increase in revenue? We help business owners find 100 K in 90 days and create a roadmap for implementation. There's no pressure, just a chance to get some assistance and clarity. Scheduling is easy. Simply visit ownitcall.com and select a time that works for you. It's time for you to focus on doubling the 20% that creates 80% of your revenue. Welcome back. Let's get back to more greatness. So first I want to play on a little bit of this idea of job security. And obviously over the last you know few years, many, many, many people have come to recognize that, 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 Job security doesn't really exist. Corporations don't give a rip about their employees. Um, they pay you just enough to 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 keep you employed. And and really, I think right now we're experiencing the reality of of inflation at levels the government you know still wants to convince us it's at four or five percent. But the reality is, my dollar isn't buying. And and it's been this way for years. Like the 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 typical real value of the dollar is at least 10 cents less every year and your employer can't pay you 10 cents you know 10 give you a 10 percent raise year after year after year they just simply can't afford to do that as an employer and so true freedom true opportunity to match the economic realities only happens through entrepreneurship free enterprise owning your own business and so Good, good on you for you know leaping into it and then finding out how much how much you love it. But let's talk about the freedom that that creates because that's the that's the real power of taking personal responsibility, working your ass off to make something real, right? And that's that's where that struggle is, right? It feels like, and the reality for most people that have jobs, they do just enough to not get fired, to get paid. And, and it's a comfort zone. And that, and that's, it's really stepping out of that comfort zone and really recognizing that if I'm not getting money, it's my fault. If I'm not getting paid, it's, it's, it's on me. Right. And so if there's no, right. if there's no payments coming, it's on me. And that's the, that's the leap into entrepreneurship that challenges many because it's pay for performance period. If you don't perform, you're not going to get paid. And so, so there is that challenge, but once you overcome that and you're in that space where it's working, because it will, if you keep on going and you keep on learning and you keep on reiterating until you're better and better and better, right? The, the freedom that owning your own business gives you and your family, that's what I want people to understand. And that's what, that's what we're really in this for, right? It's not about you know, making six figures. It's not about, it's about the freedom that can come. So talk to me a little bit about the freedom that this has given your family. Obviously, A, it's keeping you alive, right? Because you're protecting your body with exactly zero, but yep. and the legacy you're leaving, but the freedom you have to, to do different things with your wife and your four daughters. Yeah. The freedom is a big 
thing. And I'll tell you from my experience, when I exited the corporate lifestyle, it took me a long time to even learn that this particular kind of freedom was a thing. So, you know, back in 2015, when I started the company, it was me. I was able to work full time, 40 plus hours a week on contract, but I was still the guy. And when I scaled up enough and had enough business where I'm like, oh, shoot, I got to hire some people. Like, ooh, what a crazy concept. I never thought I'd be a boss. I never thought I'd be a manager, leader, servant, you know, but here we are. And learning about A, what that freedom actually looks and feels like and really owning that feeling and B, and this is the important part, allowing yourself permission to exercise that freedom. Okay. Mm. So what I mean by that is, yeah, if you build a business where your goal is, I want to work a max of 10 hours a week on this business. I don't want to spend more than 10 hours a week doing stuff. Well, then what are you going to do with the rest of that time? Well, if you don't have a plan for that, that work is going to expand to, eh, you know, I can do 12, 15. I mean, just it's a push kind of. And then whoops, you're back to working 60 plus hours a week. There goes that freedom, you know. But there is admittedly sometimes like early on in this entrepreneurial journey where I felt bad taking a day off. Like, man, I'd be working myself ragged. I would need a nap. But God bless me, I have to get this stuff done. And it's like, no, you don't. You actually don't, dude. There is so much stuff that makes up the day-to-day, -day, which if you look at it in the grander scheme of things, it's just busy work. You're just making yourself feel like you're being productive. And I'm learning that there are key things that if, if you do these things, if you correctly identified what the things are that A, you need to be the one to do, and B, you do them, your business will be successful. And I'm not going to sit here and be like, I figured it out. These three things, try this one weird trick and you'll have, no, I don't have that. But the amount of things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis, the list is a lot shorter. Oh my goodness. My calendar was so full. And now I'm like, Hey, this stuff isn't really important or it is important. And I got somebody I can delegate it to. Right. But that freedom I means you got to give yourself permission to exercise that freedom and exercise it. I mean, do more stuff with your freedom. Otherwise, like a muscle, it's going to atrophy. Take that trip. Take a two-week vacation and don't worry about stuff. Mentally, drop the worry, which is difficult because I'm a recovering worry wart. Um, drop that worry on the floor and trust that, you know what? If it comes, it comes. If it goes, it goes. What flows, flows. What crashes, crashes. I, You know, I'm kind of becoming a stoic, actually. That's what one of the big results is, is like, you know, I could sit and fret and worry about everything, but does it actually change the situation? No. Action changes the situation. Not every situation requires action. Some of them, if it crashes and burns, it's for you. It's it's a good thing to have that happen. So, man, see, I minored in philosophy. I love questions like this because this is how I exercise that. You know, I'm either writing code or I'm getting philosophical. What is the nature of is? Well, <laughs> It's a great question. So, great question. So let's talk about the example that that owning your own business and you know your wife running her own business, and how has that impacted your daughters? Uh, well, every one of them has got an entrepreneurial streak a mile wide. They and I often joke with people. I'm like, "Gee whiz, I don't know where they get that from." Um, so we're a homeschool family. We're very much non traditional. In terms of education, we're very much like, what is each girl's gift? What's their physical gift? What's their mental gift? What's their spiritual gift? And kind of like a bonsai tree, you know, you grow it in the direction it was already going to grow anyway, but you clip off the stuff that doesn't really help, right? And all four of them have expressed a strong interest in starting their own business. So uh, it was probably five or six years ago. I can't remember how long ago it was. I did an interview. I actually interviewed our oldest two daughters. Right now, they're 13 and 12. So Lorica's 13, Amelia's 12. And they were itty-bitty back then. But I interviewed them, kind of like on a show like this. And I, they had an idea. They wanted to open a coffee shop. So I spent like 30 minutes interviewing them and recorded it. And they said, 
yeah, we're going to sell. We're, we got a place picked out. We got a land, a plot picked out, and it's going to be right here. And we're going to sell coffee. A large is fifteen dollars. A medium is ten, and a small is five. And back then, I thought, yo, that's pretty expensive. But I guess with inflation being what it is these days, we might get to those numbers pretty quick. It's like dollar doesn't go very far. You just get a small cup of coffee for five bucks. Well, <laughs> keep it's, we're on that path, man. Fifteen bucks for a cup of coffee. Um, but they are they are constantly coming up with ideas for things to make money. Amelia, the 12 year old now, she actually made this mic cover and she has sold five of them. She sells them for like 35 bucks. And she's like, the first time I saw, I, we had an order come in for like three of them. The guy wanted two black ones and one red one. And I showed her the order form come through the email from Blue Commerce. And she wasn't sure what to make of it. I said, you see that number right there? You see that $105? Yeah. I said, that's your money. I said, you, you just made 105 bucks. And she's like, cool, like that. Like you just see, ka -ching, it finally, you know, when someone is willing to pay money for something that you're good at doing, there's something, you know, and I can see that the gears are turning, the gears are turning, they're figuring things out. So it's exciting. But yeah, they, all four of them, they've been making noise about starting tea shops, making little crocheted animals. They're active at the farmer's market that we go to. They're active during events. They help with stocking. They help with checkout. They just, they're getting experience with all aspects of the business. I've showed them how to update counts on the website and they're just like, okay, they're, they're getting it. I mean, I wouldn't have gotten it when I was their age. So it's kind of, you know, it's slow going, but they're, they're figuring things out, man. And well, I'm excited. And it just, it just opens up the possibilities and the creativity, right? And so mm -hmm. planting the seeds of possibility versus the limitations of unbelief, right? Like, like this, the typical parent says, well, that'll never work. You know, $15 yeah. large coffee, that'll never work. Right. And we're, we're dream killers unintentionally, sometimes out of trying to protect our children. I think, you know, cause I think parents are doing the best job with the tools that they have, but, but we put limitations in place and, and basically limiting beliefs into our children because we don't realize the power of our words where what you and your wife are doing are, creating possibilities and opening doors and just saying, Hey, anything's possible. I mean, we mm -hmm. have no idea. Right. So why yep. not let those seeds just germinate and grow and, and see what comes of them because possibility creates possibility. It does. It does. And that's something that, you know, if, if I'm speaking to parents, whether you're training your kids to be entrepreneurs or you're training them to be excellent excellent top-notch workers either way definitely be intentional and be aware of the words you say every word you speak into your children's lives has weight it has it has depth and you could unwittingly be saying things that are discouraging and you know we're not perfect parents we slip up especially if we're tired it's like uh you know but later on you look back and it's like oh, i should not have said that and and i'll go back and i'll apologize i'll be like listen I should not have used that particular tone when trying to explain. I said, I probably sounded real discouraging and I apologize. That wasn't my intent at all. Here's what I meant. But, you know, there's, there's just the, the perennial thing that we build into our girls' lives is you're smarter than you give yourself credit for. You're a lot tougher than you think you are. You can push yourself to heights that you can't even conceive of right now there are things out there mountains waiting for you to tackle that are so big that if you saw them right now you'd probably barf because you're not ready for it yet but as you keep getting stronger and you get out there and keep putting one foot in front of the other you're able to do some amazing stuff so we run like physically we run out on the roads almost every day and serena she's the nine-year-old she's the one that's really good at ringing up orders, very, very high tech. Like you give her a tablet, she'll like start taking pictures with it. And it's like, that's got a camera. She did that to my mom's phone one time. Super huge nerd, very quiet. And Lorica, the oldest one, the 13 year old, the three of us go out and we run on a regular basis. And Serena and I, we have already learned this about ourselves. I used to run cross country back in high school. And so when Serena and I are out on runs, we'll go run. Like the longest we've ever run was like 12 and a half miles. And we made it. And when Laura goes out there with us, I'm like, 
okay, this is a coachable moment. This is a teachable moment. Listen, mentally, you can push yourself a lot farther than you think you can go. Yes, it's going to hurt. Yes, you're going to be out of breath, but you're capable of probably twice as much. Like the farthest you think you could run, you could run twice that far. And I know it sounds scary, but you can. And that mindset, I, I think that's one of the things, learning about how to build that don't quit mindset into your brain when running physically, when you're metaphorically running in terms of building a business, you can push yourself. You can take tremendous risk when it looks like you're down to your last dollar and you're just hanging on by like your cuticles. Okay. Oh, it's painful. People are going to be thinking you're nuts. You're crazy. Why don't you just stop to get a job? Like, are you nuts? Yes. And that's, you know, crazy people are the ones that create stability for others. So Absolutely. that's what, that's what we're all about. Well, and being able to push through the pain, right? Push through the that's pain right. of, of no, push through the pain of the, the frustrations of mm -hmm. an empty checking account. Absolutely. Think, you know, yeah. Gives entrepreneurs the perseverance that, that a lot of others don't, you know, yeah. It does. The comfort then, zone doesn't allow those things. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, and one of the things that comes up a lot in conversation when I talk with other business owners is, you know, how do you find your niche? How do you find your unique value prop? And I say, well, mm -hmm. there's a couple, right? So the one is like, who do you serve? What do you do? How do you do it? But also you yourself are a niche. You're unique. There's no one else on the planet of 8 billion humans that's going to do this the same way you do it, right? So just be the best you that you can be, push into that as hard as you can. And really the resilience that you build over years and years of just getting out there, showing up, being there, being visible. Um, it's really going to pay off because no one, there, there are very few people that are going to go through that exact path to get where you are. All the challenges, they were there for you. They're not there for other people. And when you come out the other side, battle hardened, scarred, tough, like you just got this raw attitude about stuff like i am just freaking unstoppable like you earned that no one else can like shortcut that and get to where you are the same way you got there so absolutely yeah, go for it man that's another part of the legacy too absolutely all right we end every episode with a guest sharing their words of wisdom for those listening and trying to create a legacy in their lives what would you share well what i would share is risk isn't nearly as scary as it's made out to be your biggest enemy is going to be this space in between your ears, your brain. Your brain is wired up to try and prevent risk from happening because risk is scary. Risk makes you think, and that consumes calories. Your brain's just trying to protect you. But there's a lot of exciting things out there in the world today. If you're able to overcome that initial risk and teach your body that things are going to be okay, you're not going to catch on fire. It's not going to kill you. You're going to be fine. It's just part of the experience. You'll find that that, that noise, that chatter, that nya -nya in your head, that's like, what, what are you doing? What, get, get? It's like, just, it'll quiet down. And as it learns that that turned out okay, you'll be able to enjoy more of life. And you'll find it's just, it's not really risky at all, because even if you fail, it's just data. It doesn't mean you suck. It means you tried something. It didn't work out. So what can you do with that? And once you realize that, man, it is, you're going to feel unstoppable. Absolutely. Michael, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been a fantastic conversation. Appreciate the impact you're making. Appreciate you taking the time to share with us today. Thank you. I appreciate the gift of your time as well, sir. Thank you for tuning into this episode brought to you by the power of intentional decisions that lead to massive action. These aren't just buzzwords, they're qualities that can help you take control of your life and build a successful six or seven figure business. To support you on this journey, we're offering one of our most popular books, Fish Out Leads In, 52 Fresh Ideas for Lead Generation. You can download it free at enjoybizlife.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, please show us some love by liking, subscribing, and leaving a review. But most importantly, Share it with someone who needs to hear it. In our next episode, Robert chats with Pavel Stutuk about his journey from professional cyclist to franchisee to entrepreneur to discovering his passion for helping people get unstuck. He discovered in his journey the power of community and serving others. 
helping people understand the power of their thoughts and of taking action. He wants to add tools to equip people to find health, happiness, and harmony.